Hey, this is Superdell again. The, uh, I guess Tucker got bit set a new world speed record. Mm, well, no. To set a speed record, you actually have to maintain level flight. And of course, th that's obvious, they know this. But you can listen right here where he completely blows his whole video by accidentally admitting the truth. Listen to what he says. Uh, the thing about this wing, I don't have enough power to maintain level flight at full speed, so we're going to be dropping. I don't have enough power to maintain level flight at this speed, so we're going to be dropping like a brick. Yeah, level flight is a speed record. There's another liar out there, Trevor Steele, same thing. They'll tell any lie to promote these death trap gliders. You can't just go to a smaller and smaller glider and get more and more speed. It doesn't work because speed is an equation of power versus efficiency. So the most efficient glider gives you the highest maximum speed on X amount of power. The more uh, efficiency you have, the higher the speed you attain to be able to, you know, before you run out of power to maintain altitude. So it's like these guys are promoting death trap gliders and intentionally trying to deceive people going, oh, look how fast. And they're dropping like a brick. It's just totally not a record. It has nothing to do with it. And they're like, oh, yeah, if I just had a little more. But yeah, if you had like another 200 horsepower, the speed it takes to go this much faster exponentially like skyrockets because the drag goes up, blah, blah, blah. Any aviation enthusiast can explain. It takes a lot more power just to go a little bit faster. So, you know, thinking you've set a speed record by having a glider drop out of the sky, the, well, been there, done that many times, except for, see, I didn't list those as records because I don't give a crap about a glider that drops out of the sky. You could jump out of a plane with no parachute and make 300 miles an hour and hit the ground. It's not about who can hit the ground and die the fastest. It's about who can sustain level flight the fastest on the safest possible glider. Safest possible glider. See, even if you could get one of these death traps to match or tie the speed or even beat the speed of the Dominator by a little bit, well, what's the point? Why? The tie goes to the safer glider. Now keep in mind, these guys are promoting totally uncertified class gliders. They're trying to get to compete with the Dominator. Think about that. I mean, how humiliating is it for these people pushing death traps? that they're trying so hard to beat the safest class of glider out there. And it's really funny because it's like the Dominator is an older wing. And they're like, look at this new technology. And you're like, you're getting the crap kicked out of you by the safest class of older wing. That's right. They're manufacturing wings that are new that are not better than the wings from before. The reason they put out new wings every year is for sales. They know people are stupid enough to just assume something's better because it's new, but it's not. So Superdell comes in and every time I bring in new gliders, I actually test them and compare and I only switch if it's better. So you can see years and years and years of over a thousand videos of mine going through and comparing gliders side by side by side and then I'd find one that's better, boom, I'd switch and then I'd compare a whole bunch of gliders that either, you know, fail, fail, fail and then you find one that beats it, bam, you switch. For years, I have been advertising $5,000 to anyone who could produce a glider for me that will actually beat all of the characteristics of the Dominator. So. You get many liars out there. There's another liar out there, Mark Honeycutt. Just totally lie. Oh, I set the world speed record. And then he shows a half a second Photoshopped clip of a GPS speed. It's like, dude, if you could actually go 109 miles an hour, you would want to document it and actually show it. So 
To really show a speed record, you have to fly in both directions, back and forth, and, and show the actual evidence of said record to make it actually realistic. So for me, I do it really close to the ground. You can see my speed record of 51 miles an hour. I'm literally at like 20 foot off the deck. So you can tell I'm not dropping out of the sky like a brick, because if I did, I'd immediately hit the ground. So I'm only accelerating to the speed at which I can maintain altitude. That is your maximum speed. That's the actual max speed where you can sustain flight. Basically, you come to a point where you're full throttle and you can no longer maintain altitude or climb. Bam, that's speed. 51 miles an hour is the current record. So the, like Trevor, he's trying so hard to promote these death trap gliders to old 60 year old guys that don't know how to fly that uh, he doesn't care how many people he gets killed. It's all about just fraud, lie, take the money. It's a YouTube, it's like this new YouTube generation. Like they don't give one crap about truth or reality or morals. It's all about get the money, get the money, get the money. And so he's out there, shows a clip of him descending like a brick, going downhill. He's literally descending faster than this steep hill is dropping off. You can see him crabbing because he's got a quartering tailwind and then he's claiming a speed record of 52, 53 miles an hour is like barely any passenger. It's like they're like have to lie to come up with this speed. But again, it's a death trap. It's a totally uncertified class glider that's meant for experts only, although no expert would ever fly a death trap. It's not even as fast as the super safe, <laughs> you know, safest class of glider, the Dominator, a literally the safest class of glider. So yeah, the, the facts are there. You just have to be smarter than a fence post. Listen to the words, because he literally admits, oh yeah, I can't maintain altitude at this speed and he's dropping out of the sky. That's not a speed record, sorry dude. But see, they put the videos out there, they get views, they don't really give a crap how absurdly false it is and totally dishonest and the fact of how many people have died flying this crap and that they just wad up and do backflip 180s and lock you into a face down spiral when they collapse. They, yes, they will collapse. That's they, it guaranteed 100% you will take a collapse. The ability for a paraglider to collapse is one of the reasons they're so safe. Because the safe gliders, they can absorb energy of a violent conditions and just pop right back out, keep flying like the Dominator. But these death traps, the reason they can't pass any level of safety certifications, not A, not B, not C, not D, they are completely can't pass anything death traps, is because they're death traps. That's why it's like, why would you put so much effort and then listen to his other sales pitch? Oh man, this thing barrel rolls so nice. Like you haven't seen me do a million barrel rolls on a Dominator? <laughs> Better, because I can actually infinity barrel roll and keep on going on a Dominator. But even if you match it, it's like you're comparing a total death trap to the safest class of glider on the market. It's literally the safest glider you can fly. I'd love to find a safer glider. There might be other gliders that are about as safe, but see, that's the other end of the spectrum, is why not see if you could get your safer glider to compare with a Dominator? They keep trying to beat the Dominator with totally unlimited psycho death trap class that hundreds of people have died on. Why? Why not promote safer classic gliders? It's like they can't even get their safer classic gliders. The thing is, is there may be gliders that are about as safe as a Dominator, maybe close. It'd be hard to find one that even ties the safety because the Dominator exceeds the safety ratings by such an extent. It's kind of ridiculous. But the thing is, is you have to get all the characteristics. So first you gotta try and find a glider that's close to the safety of a Dominator and then beat its speed record. Let's see it. If you can produce that glider, I will buy it. 
Now, I don't give one crap because the next total lie they're gonna say is, oh, he only promotes it because he sells it. I sell all makes and models of gliders. I can sell everything. In fact, a couple videos before the record, I attempted the same record on six different gliders. I did a video and I showed all these different gliders that I took right up to maximum speed where I came to level flight, full throttle, as soon as I'm full throttle, bam, that's as fast as that glider can go. And all these other gliders, they weren't even freaking close. They didn't even touch the Dominator. And I'm comparing uncertified class, you know, XC comp gliders for paragliding. One, like the EOS is rated at over a 12 to one glide ratio. Now, why isn't that glider more efficient than a Dominator? Because remember, speed is an equation of efficiency and power. The more efficiency you have, the higher the top speed you make on that amount of power before you run out of power to maintain altitude. Well, it's very interesting, the answer to that question. There's so much information you learn when you actually try and beat a speed record honestly and correctly with interest in what the actual truth is instead of just trying to murder people by selling death trap gliders it's you know that's ridiculous but if you actually try you will learn an enormous amount of information i mean look back through my videos the previous speed record i set the previous one before that i set and the one before that i set and the one before that i set because i'm actually working on it and I kept comparing glider after glider after glider. In fact, look at the videos. I have gliders clear down to eight square meter that are one of a kind, literally custom made just for me to set the speed record. I have another glider, the X10, which is a 10 square meter hoax flex death trap reflex, 10 square meter reflex glider that I also tested to try and set the speed record. But again, it maxed out at like 42. It was pretty pathetic because of a lack of efficiency of that design. It's about efficiency. So I also had the uh, a comp glider. So a cross country comp glider for paragliding cross country competitions. I had a one of a kind comp glider made in only 12 square meter, 43 miles an hour. That's odd. How come a comp glider, super efficient, high aspect ratio glider made to win cross country comp, can, why can't it compete with a Dominator? Well, the interesting fact is, you know, that's what I thought. See, if you look back through my videos, it's like all, you, all these young punk lion kids, they don't have that 23 years of experience of testing all these wings and learning all of this knowledge and actually seeking the truth. They just don't give a crap. They just throw crap out so they never progress. All they have is lies and they don't care that their lies are lies and they don't care about progression or trying to improve the sport or figure out how to make things better and safer. So the knowledge came from if you take a medium size cross country glider, comp glider, and you put it next to a medium sized dominator, well, the cross country glider will kick the crap out of the dominator. Very efficient at a lighter loading. But we don't fly big, huge gliders, you know, when you gain a bit more skills in this sport. We fly smaller, more loader gliders. And so, what I found very quickly is that. As you get these high aspect ratio gliders smaller and smaller or load them more, as the loading goes up, the efficiency drops like a tank. So the EOS comp glider, as I try and accelerate it, it's like I make 36 miles an hour and it's like, and you're trying to go faster. And it's like, as you add weight, they become exponentially less efficient, which was very interesting. But you know, I don't know if that holds true as a principle. Every glider is different. So, hey, if there's a glider that will actually beat the Dominator, send it over. I'll be happy to do it. I really don't give a crap which glider beats the Dominator. Let's see it because I haven't found a glider for years that would beat the Dominator. So here I am selling the Dominator going, dang it, I'm freaking sick and tired of the Dominator, but there's nothing better. Dude, I would love to give the Dominator a boot. I'll make the video. The Dominator gets the crap kicked out of it.
just produce me a glider that will actually beat it. Hello? It's like, when you got someone who's actually honest, it's very easy to win because you simply send them a glider that wins. And it's like, woo! See, it's like with the liars, it doesn't matter how obvious the facts are, they don't give a crap. They will never in a million years. And pretty much every company out there is a liar. Now, that sounds weird, huh? Until you understand the facts and you use some logic. Let's say Toyota makes a better car than BMW. Will BMW ever admit it? Will you ever see BMW go, hey, Toyota makes a better car. We're going to actually buy this car from them and resell it. No. If BMW makes a better car, do you think Porsche will ever admit that poor, you know, BMW is better? No. If Porsche makes a better car, do you think Chevrolet is ever going to admit it? No. It's like there's almost no honest companies out there really seeking for the truth. Now, one cool thing about car companies is they can compete on a level playing field. I love seeing the Nürburgring records and speed records as they keep whacking off little tenths of a second because that's what I'm doing with the world speed record is trying to force honesty and a level playing field. I take a glider that you can see the safety and then boom, I speed check it. Let's see you beat 51 miles an hour on the safest classic glider on the market. That will be an awesome day because facts are facts. They take all of the opinion out of it. If a car makes six minutes and 35 seconds on the Nürburgring, well, that beats seven minutes. There's no opinion. Nobody has to argue, oh, wow, this car's faster. Oh, wow, this is car. But you get the Tucker Gotts and the Trevor and the Mark Honeycuts and Blackhawk and all these total dishonest frauds out there, and seven beats six. And it's like, huh? Are you, are you kidding me? So that's why I come up with these records and that's why it's so important, just like the WPPGA World Championships. It helps you compare equals for equals with no BS. So it eliminates all opinion. There is no opinion to glider characteristics. The safety of the dominator, all these things, the sink rate, the glide ratio, the speed, it's all measurable. Anyone can go out and measure them. It's not my opinion. But when you got people like Tucker Cock, oh, I just set the speed record, 58 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, dropping like a rock. You might as well just cut it off and free fall to the ground and say you hit 140. Dude, look, I broke the speed record. Oh, yeah. Hey, let's go all out and we'll all cut off our gliders and try and fly. Seriously, okay, so back to reality. This is, you know, straight up, yeah, straight up. Now, a couple other things is that the, it's really nice if you do it at a very low altitude because then there's no BS. You know, if you're low altitude, there's no, it's really hard to question whether you were in level flight because if you're dropping like a brick, you're immediately gonna hit the ground. So that's one good way to do it. And another thing that I do to keep it honest and very easy for people to see is I like to do it with a reference of the ground. So I do it like on the shore of Utah Lake where you basically have a, uh, you know, you have the shoreline so that you can see that when I flip a 180, I'm going exactly back the other direction. If somebody's clear up there at 5,000 feet, turning this way, that way, you can't actually see that they're exactly going 180 degrees the opposite direction because they don't actually care about the truth. They're just trying to push and promote and try and get people killed by promoting death traps. Even though, you know, what's their sales pitch? is it drops like a rock. I can't even maintain altitude at full throttle. That's their sales pitch. And oh, hey, I did a loop. Wow, yay for me. Go me, go me. I did a loop on an uncertified class glider. Oh, yeah, super to hell. Everybody can do that on denominator. Yeah, hello. So it's about equals for equals, measurable characteristics, and being intelligent enough to listen to the facts. And what's the bottom line? 
Now, I'm not opposed to unlimited class total death trap gliders setting a record because a speed record, it's a good start. You know, if you can say, okay, this glider does 60 miles an hour. Well, then you could work on making that glider safer and safer without sacrificing speed and go from that direction. So, uh, you know, it is kind of beneficial to test death traps, would you say, uh, if they can actually add a benefit. I mean, if you can't see any real benefit, then there's no point. You might as well do that. But really, the better way to do it would be to take the safer class of glider and see how much performance you can get out of the safest class of gliders. The goal, ultimately, is making you safer and having more fun in the sport, making it easier and everything so it's just more enjoyable and you don't have hundreds of people dying because of the scammers just totally trying to defraud people. It's kind of horrifying, but death after death after death after death, literally, how many more people have just died? I mean, there's like seven in the last matter of months and months. It's like, yeah, man, you'd have to list them. It's like you try and list them and it's like they yank this emperor. They try and hide it as much as they can. It's like the girl they killed, Lydia and Jeff and Aziz and Adelson and Dean and Ben and Richard and Scott. And then there's Eric and Grant. And I mean, the, the names go on and on and on and on of all the people who have died. And I can't even remember even like a tiny percentage of, uh, of them. But all of these deaths on totally uncertified class gliders, and even despite all of these deaths, people like this go out and try and promote these death traps like it's the best thing since sliced bread because you can do a loop. Really? And look, dude, you can fly, but you can't maintain altitude. Yeah, at full throttle, so you can't even accelerate it. Yeah, that's valuable. Not. It, it makes no sense. Are you getting a little bit of logic? So it's nice to have a super Dell because you got someone that really pisses everyone off by simply telling the truth in a logical, rational manner where if you're a decently intelligent person, you can put the pieces together. Like when someone says, I can't maintain altitude. I am going to be descending rapidly. <laughs> and then says the speed record. It's pay attention to the facts. You got safety, you got speed, you got glide ratio, you got efficiency, you got all the pieces. It's about just taking the characteristics and throwing out all the opinion. And it's important, you know, if you could get the rest of the industry, so I wasn't the only one that actually cared about the truth. If you could get the rest of the industry to actually compete to build a better glider, imagine what that would do for the sport. If they actually tried to beat the Dominator instead of just pay all kinds of money and spend boatloads of time promoting death traps, imagine if people actually tried to beat the Dominator and said, okay, look at this glider. Here's the characteristics. Let's beat it. Please beat it. Kick the, I'm sick of the Dominator, okay? I've been flying it freaking forever. Will somebody please beat the freaking glider so I can switch? Hello. It's like, yeah, I would love a new glider. What do I get? Well, there's nothing better. So you stick with what's the best. But if everyone could actually become honest and try and be a decent, rational human being that actually cared about the lives of others, they would try and make the best performing safe glider that there is and give people an option to not die when they take a collapse. That would be awesome. So you as the viewer, see you have potential because the ants outnumber the grasshoppers a thousand to one. And if you figured it out, you could force these companies to be honest and get really pissed at these scumbags for pushing death traps and saying, look, I did a loop. Ooh, so happy. Like, dude, yeah, you see what I'm saying? So. Hopefully you get the gist of this. Pretty logical, rational information. Stick to the facts. Try and force people to compete on a level playing field. Equals for equals, truth for truth, so that we can actually try and help prevent people from dying instead of spending all this time and money trying to get people to die. That would seem logical to me. Maybe that would be a good thing.
it's a good thing for people to not die. Well, if they're good people, I mean, if these people die, they just, they just, they just never seem to run out of bad guys. It's how it goes. It's the world today. Okay, let's go flying and do it safely.